name is Felicia Timas, and I'm the owner of His Daughter, and today we're going to be making Grace Soap. We are a fully functioning retail soap shop, but we sell lots of other things for body care um, and natural cleaners and a whole host of other things. But if you hear any noises, I'm sorry about that because we are fully operating uh, behind the scenes here. Uh, so let's get started on making our soap. Okay, so in this pot, we have melted our palm oil, our coconut oil, and our shea butter. So it's now melted, and now I'm going to add our olive oil. Um, and it isn't any pomace oil or organic olive oil, it's just regular olive oil. I'm going to be letting this uh, these oils get to temp, and when they're both around the 95 to 100 degree range, then we're gonna start making our soap. So now I'm gonna be adding this uh, sodium hydroxide, which is lye, and I know a lot of people are afraid of making soap because of this ingredient. If you use proper ventilation, so we have this big fan that sort of sucks out all of our, um, I guess the fumes that are related to as the lye and the water um, are together. So it sucks it out and takes it outside, so all the harmful fumes are gone. But when you are making soap, you really have to do it in a proper, properly ventilated um, area because breathing it in is not good for your health or for your lungs. So we're gonna add it. And this is like regular uh, tap water, but once we add it, it's gonna heat up to over 225 degrees. So we're gonna stir it. And as it's heating up, we're then we're gonna see the smoke the, you know, the fumes come up. So I'm going to turn on our vent. It's only probably for the first maybe 10 minutes we have it underneath this fan and then all the fumes from the lye are dissipated. But we will then let it cool to about the same uh, temp is the oils and that's when we'll start making our soap. Our oils and lye are between the 95 100 degree range. We are going to add them together, we're going to stir it up and we're going to make soap. Okay, now we're going to be mixing it up. Together somewhat, we're going to add a little bit of our scent or of our coloring because we want to turn it just a light pink, the whole bar. Everything about Grace is soft to such a beautiful light floral scent. into the mold. I'm going to just move these out a little just so we don't get them in. And it's going to come out thick and then we'll smooth it through. Okay, so we slammed it to sort of equal it out. So all the bars will be 
somewhat the same. I'm gonna just go around the edge. We're making our design because then we are gonna just, because the flat part is where all our botanicals that we made are gonna go. The calendula, the rose, the cornflowers. Seems like a lot, but a lot fall too. And the last bar is always the lightest. <laughs> but we'll get them all on. Make sure we have enough. It looks so pretty on the soap. And then, of course, we glitterize it. It's just a nice little, I call it my little wildflower mix. It's chamomile in it. It's very good for your skin. The calendula, the chamomile, the rose, all wonderful for your skin. That's how I uh, pitch a grace. It's just a lightly floral scent. A little tap. And then we do a basic glitter all over the whole shebang. And sometimes I'll give your skin a little glitter, a little sparkle, but not too much. It looks heavy, but as soon as it goes through, it really is so light on the bar. But I'm not done yet. I like a little extra pink where the botanicals are. Yeah, gotta have some sparkle. We don't add tons of glitter to all our soaps. This is bio glitter. That means that it breaks down and it doesn't end up in the oceans. So it's good environmentally and it's also good for your skin. But it makes such a beautiful bar. And that is probably one of our most popular selling soaps is our gray scent. It's just a natural herbal scent and I love it. We, have, we incorporate the flowers. It's just a beautiful bark to use and to see. So it has been about a day and our grace soap is ready to come out of the molds. Now, Felicia, the owner, his daughter, is an amazing and talented soap maker, but because she's so busy making all those soaps, um, myself and the other employees at his daughter usually remove it from the molds and cut it later and also package it. So this is our employee, Carolyn, right now, taking it out of the molds. Felicia was talking about previously when it comes to the botanicals and also the sparkles which is why we put so much on to ensure that our customers are given beautiful bars. Now because our soap is hardened enough, Carolyn is going to continue by going and trimming and cutting around the edges. As we mentioned earlier, we are a fully functioning retail natural product shop. So if you do hear any sort of noise, that could be our customers or, or our other employees who are making our products.
Now we trim around the edges of our soap bars just to kind of clean them up, give them a better look, and also so that they fit into our mesh soap bags, which you will see later. Okay, so here you see Carolyn spraying the top of the soap bars with alcohol. Now we do this just to remove any sort of white film that may have occurred during the production process. So if you are familiar at all with soap making, you will know that obviously those bars are not ready to be sold in our retail shop yet. They need to cure for two to three weeks depending on the bar to finish their hardening and saponification process and really just remove any excess moisture so that the soap lasts longer. Now these are some examples of our finished Grace hand soap. And as you can see, the color has changed of the bar because of the curing and aging process. And you can also see what Felicia was talking about with the loss of the botanicals off the top and really just the fallout. So those are our finished Grace handcrafted soap bars. If you would like to purchase any of our cured handcrafted soap bars, they are available for purchase at his daughter shop dot com.